I'm Michael, this here is Damon, and we're Vintage Diesel. With that said, today we're going to be working on a 2007 Genma Ag King tractor. It's a Chinese tractor, I really can't tell you a whole lot about it, but some of you fine folks from overseas, by the way, I just want to thank all you folks that are watching. I mean, it's 36 or 37, I think it's 38 countries now. 38 countries. It is just unbelievable that folks from all around the world, in places, some places I'd never even heard of before, or even knew where they were on the map. It's been super cool. So I thank y'all very much for watching. With that said, before I show you the tracker, let me show you something I'm very proud of. You see, we got our own shirt. Look at that. Would you just look at it? Check out Damon. There he is. Yep. Rocking the brand, folks. That's right. We are extremely proud of that. So, and that happened because of you guys. So, we sincerely appreciate it. All right. Here we are, a 2007 Genma. Now I hear you. It's not vintage, I, I get it, I get it. Look, we don't just work on old stuff. We work on some of the newer stuff too. We just want our computers in our houses and not in our trackers. That's all I'm trying to tell you, okay? If you got a tracker, I don't really care for it. I'll work on it for you, but I ain't gonna love it. <laughs> With that said, this little unit here is a pretty cool tractor. And if you don't know, this has got to be one of the most cloned tractors in the world. If you go research this tractor, you'll find it in about 25 different names. It is, it is actually pretty incredible. And I'd love it if you folks who have more experience with these brands would chime in and make a comment down below and just kind of tell us your thoughts on the Gen Ma and for that matter many of the other clones. Tell us your opinions. How do these work in the way that you use them? Let us know. We'll, we'll be talking about reliability of trackers in the, in the future and I plan on having a discussion about the cost of ownership long term between many of the different brands because I think that'll help y'all make some some purchasing decisions when you're purchasing your equipment when you're able to actually consider uh, what the long term cost of ownership will be now with that said let's move into what's going to be done to this tracker by the way do y'all hear these you see, what it is, is I, I, I think they call them barn swallows or martins or something like that. But see this little headhunter here? Here he goes. Whew. There you go. I think I got that on camera. Oh, he's good at it, too. And he gets close. He's testy because they got a nest up there, a little ones. They come each year. And we don't disturb them, but... As you can tell, they don't seem to much care either way. So you gotta kinda watch the old head while you're walking around out here, cause you will get hit. Clutch, that's what we're doing. Yep, clutch and pressure plate. And then while it's here, we're gonna address a few other small things. Uh, apparently at some point they replaced the oil sending unit. Well, now the gauge just pegs to the right again like it did before. So we're going to check around. Maybe we'll throw a mechanical gauge on there and see if it works. And if so, we'll do some ohms tests and whatnot. Let's see which part is bad. Eh? Or there. It's, I don't know, sending unit or the gauge itself in the cluster, which, well... That's not ideal. It looks like you have to buy a whole cluster. Who wants to do that? I'd rather just have a 
oil pressure gauge somewhere, but I don't know. We'll see what the customer wants to do. But we're going to go ahead and do a full service on this um, seat belt. For whatever reason, the spring in the seat belt, well, it stopped springing. It flew apart and whatnot. So, and, and if you're curious, can you, can you do this in your carport? I think so. We're going to do it in my carport. Let me put it like that. So, with that said, let us get set up. Because what we're going to do is crack the old girl up. We're going to drive it over there and take the front end loader off. Pull it back inside the carport. And then we'll disassemble Johnny 5 and get this thing rolling. Yeah, I know. I'm old. That was a... Like a... It was the name of a robot in a movie called Short Circuit. And that was, uh, I don't know, some sort of quote from it. But nonetheless, instead of seeming 100 years old, let's tear apart this tractor. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and crank it up. We're going to pull it over here to the side in front of my little truck. We're also apparently fixing to have a lot of noise made. So I'm going to hurry up and get this shot out. We're going to move the tractor. We're going to get the front end loader off, get it back underneath the carport, and then we'll start tearing it apart. Alright, so now that we got our little tracker moved, getting the front end loader off of this unit is actually really, really simple, okay? You've got two disconnects that are quick. They're quick to disconnect, so you just literally, tell you what, hold this, son. So all you're going to do, pop them loose like that. I'd like to tell you putting them back together is easy, but they're not quite. You've got, you've got your clips on the inside, on the back side. So you're essentially gonna pull these keepers out and then pull your pin on both sides. And then at that point, you can just essentially back out from underneath your front end loader. So with that said, we're gonna get set up and do just that. So we're just gonna throw this part on time-lapse though.
right, folks, to sum that up, as I'm sure you just seen in the time lapse, well, let's call that eventful. And, and I'm sorry for that noise in the background. I live in the country for the most part, and yet there's all this noise all of a sudden. It's a trash truck this time. A while ago, it was a lawn crew. So, as you can see, front end loader is sitting there, and you might have caught a glimpse of how me and old damon here had to well we had to do it by hand the man way and that sucked if you're curious as to why the starter stopped starting you know it cranked up just fine it drove over there turned the key off we went to start it oh and by the way this hose hard as a rock as you can see it's dripping all of a sudden out of the bottom. There it is. So I, I guess you're gonna need a radiator hose too. It's always something, right? I'm sure you owners know what I mean. But that starter, it ain't as hot now, but a while ago it was hot as a firecracker. I thought it, the battery might have been low, so we threw the old battery charger on it. We'll throw a multimeter on it here in a moment, but I'm pretty sure that that battery's topped off just fine. I think that starter just tried to give up the ghost. You know what? We'll continue these uh, these informative shots after that trash truck leaves the neighborhood. So with that said, we're gonna check out some things. We'll get back with you. All right, folks, so yeah, I'm a little bit of a sweaty mess. We pushed this thing in by hand earlier. And... All right, that was probably pretty smart. Damon went ahead and shut off the fan. I like it, but I know it was noisy for y'all, so he did right. So here's where we're at, just a little sit riff, just to get you going. So as you know, the starters played finicky with this. I'm gonna meter the battery, but it's a 2020 battery, 2023. It could have some load issues. And of course, I just showed you here. Let's see if we can get in there. Let you look. You can see it's just dripping out of the bottom of the radiator hose there. You give it the old squish squish, which is probably what cost it. Probably squeezed it earlier, right about there, and that might have done it in but i guess it's better to find out now when he's wanting all this checked out so i know he said he replaced the thermostat recently but that hose is it's aged and rotted this one's new though newer it looks pretty good so anyway we'll load test the battery see where it's at but if i had to guess as you seen on that case i can't do a thing about that noise that's god folks thunder's rolling so that starter is suspect we're gonna have to check it out but i mean it's not super warm just now from trying it but i can tell it's unhappy but what we've got to do is we've got to take our front end loader pedestals off on each side if y'all are curious there's two bolts that bolt them to the sway bracket okay the support bracket and then there's four bolts that bolt it to the actual bell housing okay and then those pedestals will come off and they'll get out of your way and give you some more space all right and then you're going to need to go through and disconnect all your hoses and cables see there's a cable that goes here anyway we'll figure out where the other end of this oh i see it right there but we'll follow the other end of it back and we'll probably possibly disconnect it back there this rod here we'll disconnect there okay and then we'll disconnect the other the other lines and whatnot drain our hydraulic fluid before we disconnect those lines just Thought I'd back up and give you that step. And then, before you unbolt the bell housing, 
since this is a four-wheel drive model you're gonna need to address that there okay so we'll have to disconnect the drive shaft and then we'll you know of course that's after we already have this pedestal out of the way after we get our drive shaft disconnected then we'll do our lines over here on this side unbolt it along our bell housing all the way around and roll the back half back after we get jacks underneath both so here we go oh no yeah so as you can see damon what did you do i pulled it apart well there you have it he pulled it apart well this this is what you're gonna look like when you go to do a clutch now you don't have to have this bigger gap i'm a fat man okay i like a wide berth but you don't have to go this far but as you can see your best your best bet is going to be a bottle jack okay under your front a good seven dollar and fifty cent harbor freight jack stand you know when quality is at the absolute bottom it's not a harbor freight jack stand you can quit laughing it's craftsman it's right there about the same quality though so all right as you can see you're gonna have to undo the wiring harness we we did it wrong at first we did the back wiring harness not the front wiring harness learn from our example undo the front one right right, right. so unhook it from the alternator the starter the headlights and the glow plug strip oil sending unit and uh, the uh i believe that's gonna be your clutch sensor and then you will be good to go of course you should have already disconnected your battery you did do it already right okay have it your way all right so once you get those done your steering your steering rack you're gonna have to undo all them hoses maybe you should label them i didn't but i know where they're going and i have something you probably don't have i have a manual i never have been able to say that in all my years with a chinese tractor but i have a manual i don't mean the manual gearbox you've all got that no i mean an actual honest to god open it up and read through it manual and there's english in there some other stuff that i can't quite read i ain't got a i ain't got a subscription to rosetta stone and i can hear you laughing all the way from where you are living stop i barely know english i'm a redneck okay so after you get your clutch off see this I almost want to go ahead and tell the customer the best thing to do is go ahead and resurface that bad boy because it, 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 it's not great so we might do that we might talk to the customer and see what he wants to do but resurfacing your flywheel it, you've already come this far and unless you got like a thousand miles to get somewhere and if you're that far maybe you Maybe try to crank the motor right where it sits and just hold some sanding blocks to it or something. Don't do that. Don't listen to me with that. Don't dare do that. You get hurt. But anyway, all that's left now is for us to order some parts. And then we will be ready to stick this back together. If you heard that loud holler. That is Big Goofy Ethan, being Big Goofy Ethan. So, 
Well, with that said, the next time you see us with this here getting ma, well, I guess we'll be putting it back together. Till then. Now, an important side note, though. Side notes. Oh, side notes. Have something in between either this side or both sides. Both sides. Because otherwise, oh, it'll yes. swivel. It'll it, turn on you. And... That is a really good point. Okay, if y'all notice, you can rock this motor back and forth. Listen, if you've never split a tractor, it might be a good idea. Maybe you're dealing with one much bigger and you just fell in this video and you're like, it'll show me enough. We'll show you enough. Get you some boards to put underneath each side because if you're dealing with a heavier engine, it could twist and whenever it does and you try to use your bar, you might you might mess up and knock it off your bottle jack. I don't even need to begin to tell you how bad that is to do. So don't, don't do that. All right. With that said, Damon, any other notes you got for the folks? Huh? Like and subscribe on the video. Share it with your friends. Share it with your other people. Maybe another mechanics or anyone that needs some work on this stuff. And we'll see you in the next one. Excellent. Good way. Good deal. Till the next time.